Hey everyone, I'm Nick and welcome back to Cyphonetics. Or if you're new here, please don't forget to smash that subscribe button. Today I'm talking to you about Star Trek Discovery Season 3 Episode 2. And they are definitely not in Kansas anymore, Toto. The Discovery has crash landed and they are definitely in more what resembles something like the Old West. We've got saloons, we've got clinking spurs, we've got gunfights in uh, cantinas. It's definitely not what they uh, perhaps were expecting. And we went almost an entire episode without Burnham in even one shot, except for maybe the last 30 seconds or so. Interesting episode, let's take a look at it. Well, first up, this episode takes place about a year after episode one. Burnham's obviously already uh, been hanging out on, on her planet for quite some time and been looking for Discovery. It's taken a bit of time for the Discovery, obviously, to pass through the wormhole before Discovery has arrived in the same time as Burnham has. I actually found this episode quite refreshing in the sense that Burnham wasn't in it for pretty much the entire episode. So the episode kind of had the opportunity to just kind of stand on its own two feet with a little bit more surrounding the ensemble cast, which is one thing I've always been a little bit critical of Discovery about, how it's kind of always been the Burnham show and the other cast members haven't really had that much of an opportunity to kind of rise to become part of uh, Star Trek crews like we all know and love. So I really like this episode in the sense that we kind of, we shoved Burnham to the side and say, you just stay out of this episode for a bit, Burnham. We had enough of you. Let's just concentrate on what the Discovery crew are doing. And I think it worked. And we started to see more from other characters like Detmer and Bryce. Uh, and I love the uh, banter and so forth between Reno and Stamets. And I think it definitely was a refreshing episode, uh, being Sans Burnham. I love the moment early on in this episode when um, Giorgio comes back from having just killed uh, Leland not that long ago and she's uh, still got a bit of schmutz and a bit of blood and gore and stuff stuck to the front of her boots where she's obviously laid the boot in a few times just to make sure he was properly dead. It just kind of sums up Giorgio's character that even after his uh, body has been disintegrated by the the nanites or whatever, she's still going to lay the boot in a few extra times over. Next we see Stamets recovering in sick bay. He's come out of his coma and doesn't know where he's at and everything. And again, we get one of these kind of relationshipy kind of scenes between him and Dr. Culber. I kind of am starting to tire of a little bit. It just seems like every time we see Culber on screen, it's about him and Stamets' relationship. And even though, yes, he's being healed and he's coming out of his coma and he's being, you know, dermally regenerated from his injuries and all that sort of stuff. It's still very much a relationship scene, not a medical kind of scene. So I'm, look, I'm looking forward to Dr. Culber kind of maybe getting some more scenes this season that aren't quite so relationship driven and are a little bit more focused on, you know, being the chief medical officer on board the Starship. At least for the f beginning of this episode, everyone's very much walking around the Discovery in a very zonked out state. Kayla Detmer's zonked out with a concussion, with Stamets is injured, Reno's got a bad back. Everybody just needs a couple of days of rest and relaxation. Meanwhile, they're trying to repair the ship, we got the ice stuff closing in on it, and nobody is in a fit state to uh, elicit repairs. Everybody just needs to just to lie down for a while. It's just, n no one is performing at their best. I love the scene between Reno and Stamets where in the background the hazmat guy is like cleaning up all the bits of Leland guts off the floor of the spore drive control room and uh, he's, he's saying, I've got a name, it's Gene and like Reno's going, oh, like, I don't care, I've already forgotten your name, mate. So it's, uh, the dynamic between Stamets and Reno is one of my favourite parts of the show, I think. I think there's so much... Uh, comedic potential between these two characters with this just dry wit that comes out of both of them and this sort of snarky nature. It's quite fun to watch. In some ways it kind of reminds me a little bit of the relationship between Spock and Bones. They were always kind of bickering and a bit sort of snarky towards one another and a bit cynical and that's sort of a little bit of a repeat of what we're getting here between uh, Reno and Stamets. It's a fun relationship to watch on screen. So Saru and Tilly are off to explore the planet and to 
uh, see if they can uh, get what they need at one of the local settlements. And the locations on this planet look very similar to the planet where uh, Burnham was on last week. They don't give this planet a name in this episode, but the locations distinctly look like Iceland, where they filmed the uh, the first episode with um, Book and Burnham. It just seems like maybe they've crash landed at the southern pole or the northern pole of this uh, of this world because obviously it's a lot colder. There's ice everywhere which is enveloping the ship. So maybe they've crash landed on the complete opposite side of the planet. But it distinctively looks like the similar kind of environment based on uh, the Iceland locations from episode one. I made some comparisons in uh, my video from episode one that there was a few elements of uh, Discovery now that are kind of feeling a little bit Star Wars-y. With them on this planet, we've got a, a bit of a wasteland, we've got a very industrial kind of feeling, shadowy kind of figures slipping away into bars and cantinas where there's kind of gunfights and so forth. There's just a few little tonalities that, uh, that kind of seem more Star Wars familiar. With the whole confrontation in the uh, bar, call it cantina or whatever you want with the swing swing doors guys coming in with uh, clinking spurs on their boots it's very much a, uh, a hark back to the kind of old west it's we've entered a time here that isn't that kind of happy glossy bright look of the future like we're used to in star trek it's more like it's regressed into that of a western and before long we're introduced to Zara, who's kind of like the um, the black-hatted evil cowboy who uh, comes uh, striding into the bar and obviously is uh, extorting these people for uh, pretty much everything. It's your typical old Wild West trope. But it seems like the optimism of Starfleet and the Federation still exists because these aliens that are a bit skeptical of Saru and Tilly initially um, are very hopeful when they find out they are Federation Starfleet officers and these guys have a reputation for wanting to help and, and to do the right thing. So it's good to see that sense of hope and optimism for the future still resides within the worlds of the Alpha Quadrant. Back on the ship, there's a bit more comic relief between Stamets and Reno, where they're kind of arguing about who's got the worst afflictions, Reno's back, and Stamets just got out of a coma, and they've got to climb a ladder to get into the EPS relays or something to fix it up. It's <laughs> They're kind of yeah, bickering about who is the more incapacitated and who's going to do the repair job. I have a feeling the uh, relationship between Stamets and Reno is going to be a highlight of this season. And we find out a little bit more in this episode about the uh, programmable matter. They're obviously able to use little chopsticks to uh, to repair things. Obviously, their control panels on all the new ships, like Book Ship in Episode 1. Um, I've got the little pop-up control buttons and all that sort of stuff. So programmable matter seems to be uh, kind of the in thing in the uh, 32nd century. And again, we find out a bit more about the courier structure of the galaxy now. We find this Zara character is a courier, a bit like Book and Cosmo that we saw in episode one. The galaxy obviously has a network of these couriers that essentially get a bit of dilithium, they go to worlds, they drop things off, pick things up, take them around. There's obviously a very limited amount of starship travel going on uh, at this time. And these couriers are basically there to provide necessary resources and supplies to different worlds. And obviously some of them are uh, a little bit more ethical than others. And obviously Zara is extorting these guys. You get your good ones and your bad ones. You know, obviously Book is a good one. Zara is a bad one. In this episode, we hear Zara use the term Vidraish. This term was also used, I believe, uh, in the Calypso short trek where the uh, computer on board the Discovery uh, used the term Vidraish as well. Vidraish reference seems to be a kind of a, a slang term or a derogatory term perhaps for a uh, Starfleet or Federation type. In fact, the writer of Calypso, Michael Chabon, confirmed on Instagram that Vidraish is a synecope, a type of linguistic distortion of Federation. Meanwhile, back on Discovery, the ice is starting to crush the hull of the ship and Stamets and Reno are working hard to try to replace damaged relays so that the ship can take her off and get rid of all the uh, ice that's enveloping them. And we also find out that Giorgio has managed to slip off the ship and she's now nowhere to be found. But let's face it, Giorgio just does the hell whatever she wants to do and uh, screw everybody else. Saru and Tilly are kind of thankful that, 
well, let's face it, Giorgio <laughs> doesn't listen to rules, does what the hell she likes, because she's showed up to help them in their little predicament with Zara. She ends up getting herself zapped a few times because, let's face it, she's got a bit of a mouth on her and she knows how to insult people, but she also knows how to kick ass in a big way. But let's face it, nobody wants to piss off Giorgio. She's somebody you don't want to be on the bad side of. And during the bar fight here, we get to see Saru's new ability now that he's uh, got the more evolved Kelpian physiology. His threat ganglia are now uh, attack spikes or whatever. So he puts these to good use and uh, turns Zara into a bit of a pincushion. And back on Discovery, uh, Stamets manages to get the broken unit replaced so that the ship can power up again uh, before all of the uh, crushing ice uh, destroys the ship. And after vanquishing the evil courier Zara out to the wilderness of the ice to uh, take his chances, uh, our friends in the bar give Saru and uh, Tilly one of the uh, personal transporter devices so they can very easily beam back to their ship and get out of there ASAP. And the Discovery is struggling to lift off the planet. The ice has got them. They're trying to pull away. They're, all the power in the ship is not going anywhere. The ice is moving in. And uh, worst thing is they're thinking the enemy is coming to get them. Zara's other uh, guys are coming to destroy them in their ship. But, of course, it's not at all. It's Burnham to save the day. I, I, I thought we were going to go through an entire episode without Michael Burnham even making one appearance, but she showed up in the end. It was a nice moment at the end where she... Uh, helped the ship out and we finally revealed that uh, she's been in the 32nd century for a year, hanging out, just waiting, chilling, waiting for the Discovery to show up and um, she's finally found them. I think there must be something in um, Sonequa Martin-Green's contract where she has to cry at least once in every episode about something emotional. It seems to be a regular kind of thing. So obviously episode three will be uh, a big re reuniting episode with lots of hugs and kisses and all of that sort of thing going on, no doubt. But what did you guys think of the episode? Did you enjoy it? It was good, I think, to have a, a bit of a break. Let's uh, cover the Discovery crew and everything went on with them and give Burnham and Book a break for the uh, for the week. I, I enjoyed the change of pace. What did you think? Leave a comment in the comment section. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, check out merchandise like this, others, Star Trek, whatever, you know, it's all there. Uh, link in the description below. Uh, and I will see you guys again very, very soon for my next review.